Well, I got a plan. Not really. But, uh, we got the uh, Impaler Impala here. It hasn't been uh, really ran at all this year. And that's because we got some lifter issues. We've got lifter issues from a few years ago when I floated some valves. And they kind of danced with pistons. and It wasn't good. Back then, changed the valves and uh, threw it all back together. And we did some damage to the lifters. Didn't know at the time. And uh, as the uh, time has gone on, it's gotten more and more pronounced in uh, in their in the noise that they're making. So it almost sounds like rod knock, but I've narrowed it down right to lifters. And uh, I know that because I already changed the short block and put the same damn lifters back in the short block, and we still got the same noises. So the reason why it sounds like rod knock is because it's more than one lifter. So the one lifter makes noise, and then the next lifter makes noise. So it kind of sounds like rod knock. It's in the same kind of rhythm but uh, no it's definitely lifters so anyway time to change those so we've got some goodies some stuff from China China first thing we got is a DN DNA motoring that's where I got these classy headlights from and uh, what this is this is a head stud kit we uh, I don't need head studs on this motor it's already got ARP bolts in it but uh, these are 80 bucks, and uh, a lot of LS guys that have been using ARP head studs in high horsepower builds and stuff have actually switched over to these China head studs because they're just as good, apparently. And uh, more guys were actually breaking the ARP hardware than they are with these. So ARP, damn near 500 bucks for a set of head studs. These were like 78 Canadian. We're going to go ahead and uh, throw those in, just because, why not? Now I didn't go China for lifters, even though that was an option, but it wasn't a very economical option. A uh, good set of China lifters were almost 200 bucks, and uh, you can get a set of uh, GM Performance LS7 lifters, which are rebranded as Brian Tooley Racing. Um, I think these were only 178 bucks, Canadian, or uh, sorry, US. Uh, so like $230 roughly, something like that. These are just the uh, standard LS7 uh, Delphi lifters from GM. They just rebox them as brand truly racing from GM Performance. And away you go. So we got good quality lifters there. That's what's going to be going in there. We got Brian Tooley Racing Head Gasket Set. So, it says for LS1, but LS1, LS2, 3, 4, 6, etc. And uh, originally, I've opened them up just to have a look here. Originally, when you ran the part numbers on the uh, BTR head, uh, head, ga head gaskets, they actually came back to your AC Delco. Uh, head gasket, so they just rebranded again, rebranded GM. Uh, not the case anymore, actually. Um, as I opened them up and I found what these actually are, these are not AC Delco anymore. They are still a good quality gasket, and where you can find that information out, they only have 5.7 or the high output 5.3 liter. They are branded front matters, front gaskets matter, they go toward the front, and uh, on the sides they'll all say 5.7 stamped in there, but it's for 5.7 or 5.3, um, and here's where we find our part number right here, and what we got is the L-Ring logo, uh, L-Ring is a European gasket maker, and uh, as far as I know, anyways, they uh, their standard OE equipment on a lot of uh, like your BMW, Mercedes. Uh, I'm not sure about Volkswagen, Audi, but uh, definitely the higher end European vehicles. Um, the oil cooler seal job I just did on my Jeep uh, with the Mercedes three liter diesel engine uh, was all L-ring uh, components. 
that I purchased to put in and the quality of them was excellent and of course it's still um, running great after a couple thousand K I've already got put on it with no issues at all no leaks or nothing so I'm not worried about these at all that's gonna be great definitely not worried about these lifters at all they're gonna be great um, the only thing I'm questioning so far is the head stud kit, but I mean, a lot of guys are running them. A lot of people, a lot of people are running them. I haven't ran them yet, but a lot of people are running them. So, um, so I don't really have a plan. I don't have a lot of time. So we got a, I got a modified truck intake and everything to go on here too. And it's gonna have to go back to tuning. We gotta make a better intake, probably like a fender well. And uh, it's going to have to go back for retuning with an LS7 MAF. Anyways, hopefully we can get all that to next year. I might do the front engine mount. I got a polyurethane mount. Or I got polyurethane mounts for all of it. But might be able to do the front one when the head's actually off. Because it's just right there. Should be pretty easy to get to. Same with the transmission mount. The only troublesome one is going to be on the back. And uh, I got other things to do on back there too. So not going to really worry about that stuff right now. Just want to get the last, you know, eight weeks ish of uh, decent weather in if we, if we can, eight, six weeks. I don't know. It's been a pretty crappy summer. Before you know it, it'll be winter again. So right now I don't really have a plan. I'm going to uh, go grab an eight mil and a 10 mil, my screw gun and start pulling the stuff off, whatever I can get off with that, which is pretty much everything on the top. We got, uh, you get the coil packs, valve covers, intake manifold, um, intake, uh, pretty much everything that I need out of the way um, in order to start getting to the heads. The only other thing is going to be the alternator, just a couple 15 mil bolts, and a couple of more difficult nuts to get down on the front between the engine and the strut tower. They make them pretty tight. Um, after that, uh, it's quite simple. Exhaust crossover and then the uh, manifolds got to come off to get to the head bolts. Back one's not difficult either. I just uh, try to get back there with a air ratchet and zip the uh, bolts out and just kind of leave everything sitting there. And you have just enough room to get around it all. So without further ado, let's go. Well, that's going to do it for now. I got to go get my little guy up from his nap. He's awake and ready to party. So, if you know how to work on these LS4s, they're really not bad. There's actually quite a bit of room. You have to remove your uh, fuse box and all that. You're left over with these plugs. So, you got to be delicate with this stuff sometimes. Um, that's about it. I don't remember ever having to pull that belt tensioner off back in the day when I pulled the heads the last time. And I think what I did, you can see that bolt's just in behind that pulley. What I think I must have done is probably just loosen them up and slid this bracket out just a half an inch because I know I can get the valve cover off with that bracket on there and I'm pretty sure I can uh, get to the head bolts underneath too because they'd be right about there-ish. So, not positive, but uh, I don't remember the last time I did this was probably four or five years ago so and I just pulled the whole head out with that bracket on it and of course you have the room to slide that out with the power steering reservoir just undone and moved over and the intake manifolds obviously not going to be there but that's it for now that's what uh oh about 35 minutes worth of work looks like on one of these things if you know the LS4 uh, as well as I do so the other thing we're gonna have to do is we just got to go down there down yonder two 15 mil nuts on that exhaust manifold and then you just run across and get get the uh, 13s out 613 mils looks like that with an air ratchet it's real short work so not bad, we're moving along. I'm gonna leave the air filter on for now uh, and the intake on as well. Those, uh, basically to pull that intake off is like literally a minute and a half 
uh, with one of these things here. You snap on, zip zop, and uh, they just, uh, yeah, zhoop, right across the board, both sides, some eight mils, and the uh, whole thing comes up with the fuel rail and all that. So no need to bother with any of that. Of course, all the wiring is already undone. It's pushed over that way. It's out of the way nicely. But uh, that's basically it. We're, we're already very close to uh, pulling heads. So once the intake manifold's off, it's the crossover pipe there, the exhaust crossover pipe, the two manifolds, and uh, then the head bolts. So it's uh, really not difficult to do on these things, believe it or not. It's, uh, these things are really shoehorned in there, as you can see. But uh, pretty easy. Anyway, that's it for now. Enjoy the video. And then uh, we'll upload the uh, rest of the work after. Cheers.